It was a day of tiebreaks and heartbreaks as the round-robin stage of the Louis Vuitton Cup drew to a close. For Ineos Britannia, the challenger of record, it was unbridled joy as they secured the top spot in the challenger standings after a dramatic race-off with Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli, whilst for Orient Express Racing Team, the late challenger from France, unfortunately their regatta is over after a loss to the British. With so many permutations at the start of the day, all eyes were on the winds in Barcelona as a building southerly thermal filtered up the Mediterranean and produced just enough to get racing underway. From the very start, Ineos Britannia looked sharp with Sir Ben Ainsley's team dispatching the French and thus closing down immediately one of the day's permutations, after a runaway race where Orient Express Racing Team did their level best to come back into contention. The British showed composure to cross the line after six legs with a 71-second winning delta. Speaking afterwards, a deflated Quentin Delapierre, the outstanding skipper and sailing figurehead for the French team, took the defeat well and in perspective, saying, I do think that what we built together with the sponsors and with the whole of the team is getting stronger and stronger, and for sure the ambition is to come back. But if we come back, we will need to come back stronger and faster. I think we were missing a bit of an edge in this competition and also some practice in the pre-start and the close calls. Overall, I think what we achieved together is pretty significant, but unfortunately, we were not able to get inside the semis. We built things together. We worked hard on it. We were in the mix, so it is an achievement, but not enough. Hopefully we will be back. Following France's defeat, the remaining semi-final spot was secured for Alinghi Red Bull Racing who took on the then overall leaders, Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli, with the odds seemingly stacked in the Italians' favour, based on previous performances. However, just ahead of the start, Luna Rossa sailed outside the far-left boundary with a technical issue, unable to lower their starboard board, and were disqualified by the race committee. Alinghi Red Bull Racing started cleanly and were immediately awarded the win, but the knock-on effect was a tie in the standings at the top, requiring a race-off between the Italians and the British. Ahead of the match of the day, the race-off, Emirates Team New Zealand executed a dominant performance against New York Yacht Club American Magic who brought in Lucas Calabres on the port helm today. After a fall off the foils in the pre-start, and a further fall off again on the penultimate leg of the course by the Americans, the defenders sailed off to a flattering 2 minutes and 37 seconds victory and finished the round-robin stage of the Louis Vuitton Cup topping the overall six team standings, with their results included. The next time we will see Emirates Team New Zealand Racing will be in the Louis Vuitton 37th America's Cup match on October 12th and all eyes will be on the technology they may deploy in the coming weeks. Speaking afterwards, Nathan Outeridge, Port Helm on a Tihoro teased when asked about what's coming saying, hopefully you won't be able to spot the difference, but yes, now we've got some upgrades coming to the boat which should be ready to start testing later this week. Terry Hutchinson, skipper and president of sailing operations for American Magic was clearly bemused at the team's performance on the water and spoke of the momentum in the team and how they can regain their form, saying, I think we always kind of operate the mindset of strengths and weaknesses, so we've got to have a good hard look at ourselves and understand where we don't think we're strong and how we can just reset the baseline there. The boat has pace, all the boats have their moments, so we have to just continue to identify ours. With palpable tension in the air, the race off for top spot between Ineos Britannia and Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli, for the top spot in the standings going into next weekend's Louis Vuitton Cup semi-finals was a thriller, sailed in marginal conditions just above the wind limit with both boats avoiding each other's wing wash in the pre-start dance. Ben Ainsley brought Britannia into the starboard end of the line, bang on the starting gun, to control both the windward position and starboard advantage and never looked back. Orient Express racing team bowed out with grace and style from the Louis Vuitton Cup today and will be sorely missed. What the team have achieved in a very short time is nothing short of miraculous and speaking afterwards Bruno Dubar, co-chief executive, with Stefan Kundler, gave a vision for the future saying, the good news is that the team will stay together with a few projects we're going to work on to make sure the sailors, the technical team, everybody, will stay together. We have the base, we have the boat, so we are not starting from zero. Kundler further added, we started from scratch, we caught up, but not enough. So, it's really disappointing, but at the same time I'm very proud of the team and the great effort we all put into it. 
We are building a platform for the future, for sure. We know we have fantastic technology to work on for future campaigns, if as planned the boat keeps on going in the America's Cup. American magic skipper Tom Slingsby also paid tribute, in a typically pragmatic way, the French have been amazing and, honestly from a competitive standpoint I'm happy they're eliminated now, because of their projection. They're improving so quickly, and it's good for the rest of the challenges that we got them out early because you wouldn't want to be facing him in a couple of weeks' time. Hats off to them, with the limited training and the limited budget, to be able to put together such a very competitive and impressive campaign. As the round-robin stage concludes an Emirates team New Zealand, who finished atop the overall standings, make their exit, for the remaining four challenges the Louis Vuitton Cup now moves on to the semi-final stage. For Ineos Britannia, by finishing top amongst the challengers, they now hold all the aces and can select both their opponent and the side of entry for their first race. Who they pick, be it the Italians, Americans or Swiss, they can be sure of a blockbuster battle where the first to win five races will secure a spot in the Louis Vuitton Cup final. Last day against uh, the round robins in a bit of a rubber match against Team New Zealand. On our entry, we got a boundary penalty. We came off the foil in the maneuver and got a boundary penalty, so we started a bit on the back foot. The guys did actually nice work clearing the penalty, starting on port, dipping Team New Zealand and at the first cross. You know, they were kind of boundary to boundary, and at the first cross, Team New Zealand I, you know, it was probably 170, 180 meters ahead. And we went all the way left, they went all the way right. When the boats came back together at the top mark, we were 40 meters behind. So. It was good to see the boat going well. Left turn at the top, kind of halfway to boundary, and we jibed and came back out on port and still felt the effects of the bad air of both boats, so it took a bit to get hooked up. And you know, again, the Team New Zealand boat's showing a, um, a good propensity to maneuver well and hook up with smaller sails in those conditions. And so there's a lot for us to learn and look at there. Um, you know, after the bottom mark, you know, the guys sailed a good race to try to stay in touch but again it was it was a little bit of uh snakes and ladders and as the races unfold even in the last race that we saw against Ineos and Luna Rosa the you know the, the lead boat kind of gets that one puff ahead and it's very difficult for the trailing boat to catch back up when the breeze is stable enough you get a lot of instability in the breeze and and the boats come and go with each other and so but today certainly wasn't our best and and as we look forward to uh, the racing on Saturday, you know, we'll take the week to evaluate where we're at and identify areas of improvement and keep chipping along with it. You know, it's that part of the competition that we have to continually improve and highlight those areas that we can uh, get better at. So final day of the round robins, we had a great race against the French early doors, managed to win that one. It's a tough race for the French, it effectively knocked them out of the competition, but they're a great team and great to see France continuing in the America's Cup in years to come. But for our team, yeah, strong race. Luna Rosa had a problem against the Swiss, effectively put us into a sudden death sail off. Oh, the position to be the top challenger and we managed to win it. So really, really strong performance for the team, doing a great job of understanding how to get the best performance from the boat, how to set it up well, and the techniques of sailing it fast. That's still a long way to go, but really delighted for all of the team, not just on the water, but just as importantly, back at the base here in Barcelona and in the UK. It's a big, big moment for the team and gives us some great momentum now going into the semi-finals.